Why on earth is there another four week F1 break? Angry. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to an angry podcast. Not emergency, not anything else. We just need to talk about what on earth this Formula One calendar is. We are so dialed in with momentum. And F1's like, no. You thought there was just a summer break. We now have a winter autumnal break as well. What, what's going on, Tom Bellingham? How are you feeling? Are you feeling angry, pent up, hyped up? What, what's your feelings right now, officer? It's annoying, isn't it? Um, I think my, my first reaction is <laughs> that... <laughs> it's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, it's bloody... I would just say George Russell. It's rather damn annoying um, that we get into this the, this break. Um, yeah, we've had the summer break and now there's loads more other breaks. It's great for us but that we get to do our US tour without missing loads of races. But, Hello, um, plug, US tour, plug. tickets available on screen. I don't know if it'll be on... No, it won't be on screen, especially if you're listening. You're literally not looking at a screen. Or on YouTube, actually. And there might be a graphic, but there'll be a link in the description. Come to our US live shows. We've got five of them, and then we've also got starting in Canada. Lots of love. Carry on, Tommy. But, yeah, uh, as a fan, doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, and when we first saw the 2024 calendar, I don't know about you, but when I, when the new calendar gets announced, I always kind of look at it, and the dates don't really mean a lot. Um, you're just kind of looking at, oh, is there a new race or something like that? It's only now we're living in this this season and, and the 2024 calendar that I'm looking back going, this is the most disorganized, unstructured calendar I think we've ever had in this, and even more than the COVID calendar, which is quite something. Yeah, and I think we just have to talk about it really and, and dive into, I guess, the big thing, which is why is there a month break again? Of course, we've had the summer break, which happened uh, after Belgium and then going into Netherlands. We now have one uh, going from Singapore uh, to the USA and for me it just strikes perhaps it is uh, I mean look for I, I highly doubt when Formula One are in their meetings they go you know what would be good for the sport another four-week break so there must be something that's gone wrong here whether it's at the last minute or at some point right because for me, it, it screams there was supposed to be a race there and there's not. If we look, to, look forward to the next year's calendar, uh, from Singapore to Austin, there's two weeks. Yeah. So, so, so what, what on earth is going on? What was the secret track? What, what, what I need to know. There must have been something. Uh, yeah, you, you do wonder that... I, I think that one thing that's happened recently with Formula One is uh, there's so many talks of, like, we need another US track and another US track. Was there not talk of Chicago maybe at one one point, I think it was, or, or another track that was heavily rumoured that I've not heard anything from since? And I guess something in America maybe would make sense to have USA, Mexico, and then back to, back to America, kind of all together, maybe. Um, you've got to think that's something to do with it because to have that break and then to go into another break just as the momentum of the season is picking up and it's really exciting because the start of the season felt so squashed in you know you're having so many races we got to the the mid break and it, it's not even what we'd normally have where it's kind of like half the races then at the other half of the races there was a lot more races at the start of the season and then the second half of the season is very bizarrely spaced out has to be said yeah, it's going to feel like when we get back to Austin that it's almost like a, a, a mini championship in its own. And it's because it, it's going to have been gone for so long. Uh, it's, yeah, it's utterly bizarre. Uh, but yeah, they don't have any of those spaces next year. Uh, I, I really Can can't I make you even more annoyed? Two weeks. Go on. Oh, please. Something I've just noticed. Go on. So, <laughs> so, you, so we do USA, Mexico, and Brazil, and we're like, yes, F1's back. Three week break again. What are they doing? Why do we need? <laughs> what why is do, this why, why, do we, why do we need a triple header, and then three <laughs> week break, then triple header? Do they feel like we can't concentrate if we have two week breaks between each races? Because for me, I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, look, I love Formula One and I love watching Formula One, but we have discussed this maybe a few years ago about 
the quantity of races and things like that and, and looking forward to races as well. For me, we don't need triple headers necessarily. I, I, I wouldn't mind double header, two week break, double header, two week break, double header. That for me, I think would be yeah, fine. better. Triple header, three week break, triple header. I mean, for the teams, are they trying to just finish them off in the last? I mean, that's a wild sense. Are they trying to? Are they? Are they trying to tire them out so much at the end of the season? You know? Yeah, it's so so bizarre. I mean, yeah, like looking at the calendar now, I don't feel like the first half, and it's not even the first half. Like I, I kind of said, fourteen races. We got we got to the summer break. And I felt like they were very sensibly spaced out. You kind of had a couple of week breaks, then maybe you would have a back-to-back, -back, the odd triple header, but nothing too crazy and, and not these huge breaks. We get back from the summer break. We have uh, Netherlands, Italy, then a two-week break where you get two more races, then a month break, then three more races, then three-week break, then three more races, triple header. That, that doesn't make any sense it's like they've got to the 14th race where everything's locked in and then they're, they're kind of you know they've got all the contracts sort of sorted for the first 14 races and then go there's a lot of time left not many <laughs> races how, Stefano, how, how are we going to get all these in? races yet no oh we're still on 24 oh okay oops um so we've signed yeah all of these dates and we've still got half a year left what do we do and, and also, as well, I think it's worth discussing not just the oddly spaced uh, races, but the, the triple header not making sense at all. But I know that I'm sure Las Vegas, they probably offer you one weekend that you can cause absolute carnage uh, at a place like that um, to be able to deliver a Formula One race. But at the same time, just from a common sense perspective, why is that a back to uh, a triple header involving Qatar and Abu Dhabi afterwards? Surely Vegas deserves a week each side to to get ready for it and then leave. It doesn't make that one doesn't make any sense to me. No, and I feel like that one was the one that all the teams said was an absolute killer last year. Um, it was, it was, Vegas, yeah, because the, the session one. times. The session times were weird, so everyone was knackered anyway, and then it's like, right, we've got to get to uh, Qatar now, which. Uh, my, I mean, I'm pretty sure I remember looking at it last year. How long is a flight from Las Vegas to Qatar? I don't feel like it's very, you know, you know, you have these other, these other ones where they're kind of close. Eighteen like USA. and a half hours. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for back to back. How? I get it. I get it. Like. 18 Sometimes it... and a half hours to get from Vegas to Qatar. A triple header makes sense sometimes. You know, USA, Mexico, Brazil, you kind of get it because they're kind of all pretty close to each other to a point. Uh, USA and Mexico, of course, are. Uh, Brazil, less so, but it's still kind of close. But an 18-hour flight when you've just had the awful session times of Vegas... The, the poor people working in Formula 1 are going to be absolutely destroyed doing that. Um, insane. Uh, they certainly are. So that one is is definitely a, a big talking point. Not really one that anyone at the moment is really speaking about, uh, but I'm sure within the paddock uh, they are uh, highlighting their concerns quite quite a lot. But they, they highlighted the concerns last year and nothing's changed as far as I'm aware. What time, I'm pretty sure Vegas is on at exactly the same time uh, as it was last year let's have a look the race here is 6 a.m so yeah uh, they haven't changed the the session times at all i don't think um, not it's so. not much at all to be honest no yeah, yeah so very it's not really manageable very bizarre okay yes. so what, what, weird let's talk about sprints then shall we because uh, that is also something else which is i've i i've almost forgotten they exist it, it, it's <laughs> same like when's same. the last sprint that we had uh, the last sprint was June the 29th, and the next one is October Hello. the 19th. June, June the 29th. It's my, it's my birthday. Hello. Come on. Come on, the lads. That's why <laughs> I can't remember it that much. <laughs> so, it was a good one. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a long time. And then we've got one in Austin, one in Brazil. One in Brazil, one in Qatar. So, why so have basically. We got three sprints in the last six races. Yeah. I, I, another thing. I. 
I was exactly the same as you, where I kind of forgot sprints were a thing. Because at the start of the year, it felt like, oh, China, we had the sprint. Then two weeks later, we're in Miami doing a sprint. Then, uh, yeah, like a, a month and a bit for Austria. But then, yeah, we've not had a sprint for ages. And then they all come at once for the end. And just... I don't know. It just surely, surely you want them spaced out a bit more uh, rather than is is the cynic in me saying that they put it at the end of the season so everyone goes oh actually yeah sprints are awesome especially if you know we get this title battle and then it kind of justifies them doing more but why there's this kind of barren part of the f1 calendar where sprints don't exist for uh what four months yeah like what what's that about you do wonder how they decide the sprints because none of this is purely on entertainment and what will give us the best sprint racing, is it? <clears throat> we we already no. spoke about Miami and how I mean, every Miami race had been terrible. So they're like, well, why don't we give them one more and see if it works? Uh, and you do wonder if it is a case of the highest bidder or particular conversations that go on uh, because it is a, a very strangely spaced um, sprint. You would think, yeah, you've got 24, six of them, put them every four races, and then it works beautifully. But sadly, F1 is run. Can I just say it's the things. same next year as well, pretty oh, much. Oh, good. Um, you have one in Mar end of March, one at the start of May, one in July, and then again, October, November. November. So the same, <laughs> uh, Austin, Brazil, and Qatar again get the sprints. Um, I like the Brazil was always a sprint. That's that is the one W. That from, is the one where you go. That is where they go. Yeah, this will be a banger. So we're going to have a sprint. Uh, the others you got to think. Um, you know, is, is maybe for uh, more kind of marketing reasons and stuff. Um, Belgium again. That wasn't a good sprint. Why are they doing that next year? But that's for another video. Um, yeah, this calendar just makes no sense. It doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but look, we just thought we wanted to essentially just rant a little bit because it doesn't make much sense. Formula One aren't changing it for next year. What 26 will look like, we'll have to wait until next year to find that out. Tommy, have you got any other sort of further further anger to, to share with everyone? Well, yeah, looking at the 2025 calendar, at least they've seemed to have learnt their lesson, which makes me... I'm convinced that there must have been this rogue race in the middle of, of this that's kind of... They had quite nice spacing out. For whatever reason, it's folded at the last minute or they couldn't quite make it happen. The The way Formula One's growing in America and they're, they're pushing lots of US races makes me think that surely it was a US race after um, after Singapore, maybe, to even have before for Austin. Um, the Max Verstappen fan in me is going... Well, at least Red Bull have a month now to work on their car. They yeah. probably of all the people that are not ranting right now, it's probably Red Bull because they're probably the happiest that they've got a month to kind of work out what's on earth is going weeks, on. Everyone, why don't we have two months off just to really <laughs> dial in our car? I mean, you say that Formula One have, have learned their lesson. There is still the Vegas, Qatar, Abu Dhabi triple header at the end of the next season as well. Uh, so I'm sure the teams will be fuming with that one. And I think we will leave it there. So thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. We are into this this sort of hazy period of no Formula One, but we will keep you entertained with podcasts and all that sort of stuff. Our UK end of season live show tour is available tickets links and everything else will be all over our social media so please come along it's going to be the biggest best show yet and tommy we're going to the us of a well actually no we're going to canada first aren't we uh for our live show tour over there which there are still a few tickets available so come along indeed um and there's not uh, random four week breaks between our shows so don't worry about it we're uh <laughs> Uh, we, yeah, we the momentum of live shows better. for those that are coming to all of them <laughs> you won't be sad about the breaks <laughs> right that is it Tommy what are your final thoughts final thoughts uh, you just shared a thought and now sort you've, you've lost everything okay sort, sort it out, out brilliant out thank you Tommy uh, get rid of uh, just just sort sprints out as well That that's almost a new rant that I need to have about sprints just picking terrible circuits for them 
they don't make Ooh. sense. So okay, another another rant from Tommy. I'm ready for it. We'll see you very soon, everybody. Lots of love. Take care. Bye bye. Goodbye.